Bridging the gap is about getting a group of youngsters together with the elderly and asking us questions about stories about our past and exchanging ideas. And today, we were fortunate enough to get a fantastic group of young people. Today, I stand before you to shed light on a remarkable chapter of history and pay tribute to an extraordinary group of individuals known as the Windrush Generation. I'm sure we can all agree that this generation holds a special place in our hearts as they embody resilience, courage, and the unbeatable spirit of human perseverance. Their story is one that deserves to be heard, celebrated, and never forgotten. Left their homes on a ship they came. Sunshine no more, just pure rain. Not really sure what to expect. However, ambition is something they kept. Imagine leaving your home. Imagine saying goodbye to your friends and family, the only place you've known your whole life. Could you? The Windrush generation stood strong, with their heads held up high, and the way they went with hope in their heart, carrying not just their belongings, but also dreams for a brighter future. When I think of the Windrush generation, I think of the word ambition. To be ambitious is to have determination to achieve success to strive for goals. Ambition is fueled by a deep inner drive, fueled by passion, a refusal to settle for mediocrity. Invited to a foreign country, they came and lived. Built up this nation brick by brick. Hard work and love, and, and love was what they placed, but hate and discrimination was what they faced. Through their struggles, the Windrush generation has taught us the value of resilience. They may have faced inequality and exclusion, but they knew what they came here to do. So they harnessed their inner strength and they fostered a sense of community and supported one another through the toughest of times. One thing that I think is important to know is the fact that they never gave up. Through our daily lives, I feel as though a lot of us have the tendency to give up. Give up on our dreams, give up on our passions, give up on ourselves, simply because it's the easy way out. Something I think we can learn from the Windrush generation is the fact that no matter how difficult something may seem, do not stop. Do not stop because your own positive future begins in this very moment. All you have is now and every goal is possible from here. Windrush generation, we hear your voices loud and clear. Your stories are unforgettable, timeless and ever near. Let's embrace the joy and lessons and never part for their spirit lives on in each and every beating heart. Today is a day of acknowledgement and reflection. Let their story serve as a reminder that through the toughest of times, unity, compassion and drive can overcome the greatest of challenges. Together, let's ensure that the Windrush generation is not just a part of history, but also a guiding light for future generations. Inspiring us, to, inspiring us to build a world that is fair, inclusive, and embraces the richness of diversity. Thank you. I am going to test, or we are going to test your knowledge. <laughs> How much you know about the West Indies and the Caribbean? But I'm going to take out some things here that I want you to identify. Mm. You know this one? Anger. You're sure? Yeah. You're absolutely sure? They said it, so yeah. They said it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a melon? A what? A melon. Apple. <laughs> a what? <laughs> this is going from bad to worse. This is called... A breadfruit. Oh. A breadfruit. I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. You, no, 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 no. Yeah. Come on. I knew that. You didn't know that. Yeah. You didn't say it. I knew that. All right. It looks like a big turnip yeah. almost. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm... Is it like a shaved coconut? Is it hard? It's not hard. Is it sharp? Soft. Is it soft? When you cook it. When you cook it, it is. What does it begin with? D. D. I'm not so sure. D, nah, nah, I can tell you. It's nah. called dashi. Mm -hmm. Dashin. Dashin. Okay. As in D A S H E E N. E E N. Mm. This one now. 
What am I seeing? What is it? I think I'm seeing it. What is it? It's hard right now. It is hard. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot what it's called. I've seen it before. You've seen it? Think yeah. about it. Yeah. 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 Yeah
is sent for eight of them, actually. So I was quite close to my grandmother, you know, home. And when I came here, my brothers and sisters, they were, you know, so I was family. Yeah. I was very close to family. I came from a single parent family. I was brought up by my mother, um, who was a tough cookie. Oh God, she was a tough <laughs> woman. Total respect for her. But because it was, she was a, a single parent, um, we never had that sort of closeness or that bond. But my aunts, I had, there are four women who I talk about in my life. <sighs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. In a strange way, and even my mother, um, I would say, through her resilience, her dignity, I am who I am today. Mm. What were your, your dreams when you came to this country? My dream was to work hard. I left three children behind, so my dream was to try and get a home and then to send for my three children that I left home. But you know, in those days, things were very hard. Mm -hmm. So we had a sort of community mm -hmm. and that's how we sort of get together, our community, and we throw the partner. So if you get three pounds, 50 for your wages, and then that 20 pounds, that make you 23 pounds for the week. So then you can send some home for children, send some home for your parents, pay your rent and buy food and save to go back to work. What did you most dislike about England? At my time, there was a, a group of guys, they call them teddy boys. They were going around picking on black guys. Mm. And black people, not black guys. You know, they, if they, you know, they were in gangs, six, seven of them come in and they see you alone, they beat you up. It was a fun to just beat you up. What I did, because you see, I came from Jamaica, Kingston. Yeah. So I. <laughs> <laughs> what I did very quickly formed my own gang. Weekends, you never see me on the street unless, unless it's six, seven, eight of us. Yeah. But it wasn't gangs, it was group. Groups, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. We, we never fight. No. We only defend ourselves. We're stronger in numbers, though. Yeah. 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 Stronger in numbers. So mm. I didn't like that because you have to defend yourself at all times during, yeah, during those days. Yeah. I really had to thank, and today I thank, the Jamaicans mm. because they were totally responsible for getting rid of the Teddy Boys. Because when the Teddy Boys realize mm. that there's opposition, mm. they thought after a while there was no problem. So yeah. because of them, I was able to walk mm. the streets and felt a lot safer. Well, when I came to England, I realized I was a black person. <laughs> I was a young black woman, a young black girl, and I, oh, <laughs> I just couldn't comprehend. Mm. You know, I, I went home and I said to my mom, you know what, someone just called me at Denman Street because she sent me to the shop. Mm. And I told her, and she said, and what did you do? I said, mom, I'm not going to tell you what I said <laughs> or what I did. How did you contact your family back home? Did you have a mobile phone? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me? No, my dear, in those days there were no mobile phone. And you're lucky if a telephone is in, your, in the house where you are. <laughs> oh, no, we don't know nothing at all about that. <laughs> nothing no. like that. You mm. still have to write letters. So we have to write letters. I want to direct this question to Rudolph, as I know you're on the TV scene. Mm -hmm. um, what did you watch on TV when you came over here? Well, when I came over, of course, in those days, it was all black and white. Mm -hmm. We had um, Sunday night at the London Palladium. We had things like comedy shows like More Common Wise. BBC did plays for today. Mm. Um, you know, very high quality Wednesday night theatres. There weren't many, if any at all, black actors in it. Um, 
But I, yeah, and so those were the things that I, I watched uh, uh, as, a, as a young person in, in, in the UK. Did they have McDonald's when you came to this, <laughs> this country? <laughs> no, nothing like that. It was just fish cheap shop. Nothing shopping. like that. Only the fish and chips. That's sad. Only the fish and chips. That's sad. You, and True or false? I made the right decision coming to this country. True or false? I wanted to go back home. I think we all know the answers you know to that. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, false. Oh, but why didn't you want to go back home? Simply because that my um, theatre just professionally doesn't exist in the Caribbean mm. Mm. or in Trinidad. And if I wanted to advance, if I wanted to, you know, the sky was the limit. I had mentally, I had to adapt, adapt and mm. say yes. Either America or England, and it happened to be England. So I knew I was here for a reason, foreseeable mm. future. True yeah. or false? I enjoyed eating the fish, the fish and and chips. No. <laughs> <laughs> True or false? I consider England to be my home now. No, there's a double edge. <laughs> so, you, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Okay. But the thing is, that we, we got to say hour. half and half. We got to say one or the other. I own um, England as my home now. Mm. I did went back to Jamaica and spent uh, three years out there. My husband and myself, we said, no, it's not, not for us. So we came back. I still think of Trinidad as home. My family is here, you yeah. know. I, I go to Jamaica every year. Mm. I've been doing that for time. <laughs> so I spent six months there, I spent six months here, so really I don't know where I'm at. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, halfway. <laughs> <laughs> halfway there. What advice would you give to us young people growing up in this country? Stay strong. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Stay strong. Love one another, respect one another, and grasp what you can. Learn what you can. Yeah. Do the best you can for all you need, for you only pass this way once. Mm. And be a leader, yeah. a follower. Mm. That is the, one of the most important things. Choose something that you love and be true to it. Con continuously. Mm. Con you know, just keep on working at it. That you love, that is good. You all are setting examples. Yeah. Consider yourself as pioneers. Mm -hmm. Consider yourself as responsible for the next generation. Yeah. It is a hell of a responsibility and you're not too young to embrace that responsibility. Building bridges. The curtains are queued for the closing. The cast of the parents above. This show has been truly mind-blowing. A standing ovation. Just wow. The dream of a brand new beginning was sold to them at young. The hope that their lives would be better, offered jobs, open doors, and some fun. England, it was the mother country. The street people said, paved with gold. They wasn't prepared for the weather. The worst thing that they said was the cold. Miss Aki and Saltfish and Dumpling <laughs> from Mangoes, Dasheen, and Breadfruit. Although food in England was different, they never forgot all their roots. Leaving family and loved ones was painful. The home that they knew left behind. No more soul food, no sea and no sunshine. Unprepared for what they would find. Arriving on ships and on airplanes. Anxious, excited, afraid. Conflicting emotions consumed them. First impressions that many dismayed. No blacks, no dogs, no Irish. These signs were almost everywhere, rejected because of their colour by a country that welcomed them here. The racists tried hard to defeat them, the Ted boys and racist police. Small islands ran away on occasions, but Jamaicans stood up to the beat. They worked hard and took care of their families. Their spouse and their children came next. They worked harder to build strong foundations. Our elders are truly the best. Who they have become is amazing, 
What they have endured is just mad. Why they did this for us is breathtaking. And when they finish their race, we'll be sad. Rudolph and Philip and Shirley. The generation came not to play games. Joy and Lurleen not forgetting. It's important that we say their names. We will never forget what they taught us. When they came here, they had a great plan. We will never forget how they all paved the way. On the shoulders of giants we stand. All the stories we hear came before us. All the legacies left on our lives. So our generation never forgets this. It's time we help bridge in the gap. Um, when we first came to this country, we had none of this. Mm. Mm. Um, we had rice and potato. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I missed all this when I came. I would make up songs mm. as I came here. I'm um, looking at the trees, no mango, no, <laughs> no tangerine, no oranges, no guava, no star apple, no, nothing for me that interests me. Yeah. So I would sit at the window and sing and look out and say, I want to go back to Jamaica, you know that's my home. <laughs>